There was a guy in there. Everybody knew him. He was wealthy. He had fast cars. All the ladies liked him, and I wanted to be him. I found out later that this guy was a drug dealer. My friends, my family, the media, everybody told me that crime was wrong. However, I see genius in this person. This guy was innovator. This is my story, straight from the heart. Please listen to my story. I was born in the inner city of St. Paul's in Easton. Unemployment was high, no job opportunities. Most people involved in crime. We had the 80s riots. But I believed in myself that I could achieve something great. At that time, I didn't really know what it was. My mom and dad wanted the best for me, so they decided to bring me to Colson School. However, when I went to Colson Primary, most of my friends was living in big houses. I was living in the inner city. My mom and dad worked. Their mom and dad worked. But they seemed to have a better lifestyle than me. But I still believed that one day I was going to achieve something great. I believe this is not the lifestyle I need to live. So I kept that thought. I was an academic in school. I'm dyslexic. But for some reason, my inner self told me I could achieve something great. When I finished Colston, High, Colston Primary School, I went to Fulton High School. It was a 45 minutes bus route there and 45 minutes bus route back. I was head boy, I was sports captain. I was good at sports. Yes, I was good at sports. <laughs> but I didn't want to be a stereotype. I wanted to achieve something great. As I mentioned before, I believed I could achieve something great. But where I came from, there was an opportunity for me. My mom and dad always wanted me to see different races, different faces, and different cultures. They wanted me to see the world differently. So when I finished Fulton High School, I looked around and I said, I want to find out who I am. Most of my friends, they was going to college, university. I want to find out what my purpose is in life. So what I did, I applied for many jobs, unsuccessful. I started volunteering, and I wanted to see how people work, what they thought about, how their minds were. Eventually, I got a job in a second-hand shop. I was like, I'm over the moon, yeah! <laughs> so I felt confident, I was, I was a confident guy. I thought, you know what? I feel good now. I can choose something great now. But that came to an end. I was back to square one, thinking, what do I do next? Where's the opportunities? Do I follow my friends, go back involved in crime? I don't know. I eventually got a job at the Bristol City Council. <laughs> Everybody starts laughing. I was a trainee arts coordinator. And I realized these people are smarter than me, you know. They might understand the jargon language and writing the letters. We're kind of the same people. So I remember one time, my boss, one of my bosses, I said, why do we write these jargon letters when a lot of people English ain't in their first language? I don't understand. And for those people that don't know what jargon is, it's posh language. I was like, 
but they don't understand English. What are we doing it for? English is not their first language. Doesn't make sense. And I actually said to my boss as well, I said to my boss, if you was walking home and you got mugged, would you still walk that way home again? Or would you go a different route? My point is that we do things the same. We need to be innovators. We need to change the world for the better. So you remember earlier, I talked about the guy who used to know. Clinton, his name was. And I see genius with Clinton. Sometimes in life, We've got to do things differently. We've got to come out of our comfort zone. Most companies, if they have a diverse team, they do 35 better off. Profit, strategy, marketing. But a lot of companies don't do this. For example, we've got a screw in the wall. You have a screw, another screw, and another screw. There's only one way you can take that screw is by screwing it. But if you have a screwdriver, hammer, pliers, saw, you've got more ways of taking that screw out. And that's what we need to do in life. We need to employ people differently. It's not about people involved in crime, it's about looking at things differently. I don't care if you're black, white, young and old. We need to be more creative in life. And that's what it's about. So there's not much difference in the corporate world and the street world. And I'm going to break that down for you. Some of you might say politicians are crooks. Some of you might say bankers are crooks. I'll let you decide. <laughs> so on the street side, you've got your product, the drugs. On the corporate side, you've got your product, the coffee. On the street side, you've got your crew. On the corporate side, you've got your team. On the street side, you make money, lose money. On the corporate side, profit and loss. On the street side, bankrupt, shot, prison, stabbed. On the business side, on the corporate side, lose your job or bankrupt. So what I've realized, that the person, most of my friends was taking more of a risk in life. So I said, what if I can teach them to learn the legal hustle? So what I decided to set up for Street to Board, and Street to Board is a CIC company that we'll started in 2016. And what we do, we, turn, we tell people the street versus corporate business, we look at mindset, we look at jargon language versus street language, we also have a street meets boardroom mix-up, and we also look at markets as well. We're currently signed to the same company what does Apprentice, so Alan Sugar is my label mate and X Factor as well, Simon Cowell. We're also developing a street to boardroom board game as well. And we're also developing a street to boardroom app. What the app will allow you to do is transfer your language. Because for many of my friends and myself, it was very hard for us, because I don't understand the jargon language. So what the app will allow you to do is you're applying for a job, and you think to yourself, you know what? I kind of like that job, but I don't understand the language. It will allow you to transfer the language into basic English. However, if you're an employer as well, and you want to kind of get to the kind of street level, you want to apply something diverse and background, it will allow you to transfer the language as well. The game's about taking the risk. It's about if you go the street way, you might make money, but you eventually lose the money. But if you go to the, the right way, you have longevity in life. So we've been in 50 magazines worldwide. And I said to you, it's about doing things differently. This talks not about street versus boardroom. This is about looking differently. How bad do you really want to make your company grow? When you get 10 years, you go long-termers. So you go with the long-termer prisoners. You've got lifers all around you, and you get to understand, say, you know what? This thing's not no joke thing, and there's a lot of people doing this thing, and there's a lot of people doing bird for it and paying for it, you know what I mean? It's, you don't get away with it much. I'm looking for people who think there's no opportunity for them. People involved in crime, maybe been locked up a few times, and maybe got no directions. 
but thinking to myself, well, I can't get a job because I've got a criminal record. I can't get a job because I've got a caution. There's no opportunity where I live. So where do I go from here? Yeah, I ain't really had like a proper full-time, full-on job. In them kind of areas, you have to change yourself. You have to fit into their like, type of thing. I mean, if you're going to talk to kids that are going wrong, I've done that. And do you know what? I've done it all the way through. So I know everything you're going to get. And I ain't never going to tell the kids that it's all bad, because it's lies. It's about showing that all the things that I've done on the street, if I would have just done them in the corporate world, I would have made it. The guy that was running the course, it wasn't the one that had the suit, it was the one that had the hoodie. It was mad because I was thinking it was the other way around, do you know what I mean? You can make money without doing these other things. It might take a little bit longer, but you can do it. He's, he's not from like a corporate world, do you know what I mean? He's from like where I'm from. There's opportunity for people like me, do you know what I mean? To go in there as well. Dressed up how I'm dressed up, I don't need to be suited up, I don't need to have this major qualification. I just go there and then see what they can offer me. One of the guys who come to the course, I seen him not too long ago. He come up to me the other day, he had some plans. It upped him when he came to the course. It upped his like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. You know what I'm trying to say? And he's doing his thing. So imagine this, it's young people and adults who find themselves caught in a range of legal activities could also achieve greatness showing the knowledge and confidence to apply what they have learned from the streets to learn the legal hustle. It's not where you come from, it's where you go and what's important. Are you that serious? Most people say they're serious, but they're not really that serious. I want to know how serious you are. For example, I said to one guy, he wanted to have more diverse. I said, how serious you are? He told me he's 100% serious. So I said to him, I don't take you seriously. I said, if I wasn't giving you, if your boss wasn't paying you at the end of the month, would you just accept it? He said, no. I said, what would you do about it? He said, they talked to his boss. They talked to his lawyers. They go to citizen advice. I said, that's how serious you've got to be about this. So back on where I came from, the odds was against me. But I know I have something great in myself. Most of my friends involved in crime, not for any reason really, no motivation, no mentors. And I thought to myself, you know what? I want to make the world a better place. We've been 15 magazines worldwide. We're very new. I always remember, it's not where you come from, it's where you go and what's important. Thank you.